I just got done packaging more packages. So I just want to say thank you to all of you. This is what I've been up to and what I've been really busy doing just recently is getting all of your orders packed. So thank you so much for supporting our business, Manor House Market. And we are so excited to see plants growing in your garden that were grown from us. And we are, we are truly feeling good about being a part of your gardens this year and seeing what you do with them. So feel free to share with us how they progress and how they do for you. You know, if you're wondering who's packaging these, it's literally me, every little plant. When we launched a couple weeks ago, it was just like crazy. Um, so I just really had to play catch up and then go from there because I wanted to make sure everybody received their uh, orders really quickly and that I didn't get behind, but it is planting season now. As you can see, there's a project going on in the middle of the garden here, and I'm not gonna lie, it does trigger my anxiety a little bit, so I'm gonna kinda stay away from those gardens there, because if I plant anything, I'm afraid it'll get stepped on during the process. Um, so these gardens may end up getting planted, you know, two weeks from now. Um, so they'll be a little bit behind, but you know what? They're gonna look amazing at the end of the season when everything else is looking kind of weathered. So I'm gonna focus more on these eight beds. Jason got some of these filled up a bit for me. I did already get my potatoes in, so I'll show you that. This over here is where I have my potatoes planted. Obviously it doesn't look like much, it just looks like dirt. <laughs> <laughs> but there are potatoes under there and I didn't have Jason fill this end of the bed because as the potatoes keep popping I'm just gonna keep throwing some more of our garden soil over top of it which the garden mixture is really just a mixture of topsoil and compost together and it's really really nice and fine so it's easy to work with today my goal is to get these onions in um, over here I left some of our whorehound um, that way it can, you know, I don't have to plant any. It's already there. And we're gonna kind of plant around this. I got my sweet wormwood and I love it. It smells so amazing. So I'm just getting these planted into, into the garden right now. I wanted to make sure that I planted these in a space where I could plant a lot of them. Sweet wormwood is my favorite uh, herb for scents because it smells so good i'm like i love it so much but look at how nice these are they're so cute aren't they this is how we planted our entire garden last year and it did really well as sweet wormwood grows it does not get a lot of bushiness along the bottom of the plants it grows more taller and what I guess I'd call lean. So it doesn't get bushiness on, you know, on the bottom. So a lot of times you can see through them near the bottom, which is totally fine because they're still beautiful. But what I am going to do is I'm going to place some of my little garden poppers of these wave petunias and I'm going to plant these in between. And because they're on the end, they'll then trail over. As you can see, these are a very thick, heavily seeded uh, cluster of them. And I will show you what they look like after just one week of being planted up into a pot. Here they are in the greenhouse. This is what I started with just one week ago. Look at how crazy and fast these poppers take off because they are truly ready to get going in the garden or in a planter or a pot. These ones I started in pots because I'm going to actually grow these in a lot of our perennial beds so that way they act as a really pretty purple ground cover and just give it this really beautiful look even when perennials are not in blossom. I don't know if you guys remember me planting up caladiums but they are really taking off and looking amazing. What is so cool about a lot of these varieties is that they are full sun varieties or part sun and shade varieties and they are just absolutely gorgeous. As you can see too, I um, already seeded a ton more stuff. That's just to keep up with demand for the store and because I kept up with the demand so I had to seed more for my own garden. Um, and I know what varieties take off really fast so I knew what we could kind of, you know, allow to give up for our garden and have uh, seeded just a little bit later. Um, but over here, as you can see, they are looking absolutely gorgeous. 
This one's the Rose Glow. I really, really like that one. These are an extremely, extremely vigorous grower because these were started when all of the other ones were as well. And this one is called Burning Heart. And then right next door to it is called Hot Flash. And what I like is it's very similar to that one, but it has more of like this sheen to its leaf, which gives it just even more of that tropical. It almost makes it look like a fake plant but it is super cool. When I plant my garden, I always think about how the varieties grow, where they tend to have a little bare spot in their growth habits, um, where I could put something extra. And a lot of times I go through and plant my gardens and then add little extra seeds here and there. Um, so that way we just have random, you know, little bits of joy popping up in the garden and sometimes there's quite a few volunteers as well, but that's what's been so awesome about really adding a lot more herbs for healing gardens, for healing plants and medicinal plants is a lot of those varieties return for us. So there's not as much to plant, which is amazing because then I'm able to focus on our ground beds in the back too. Um, the kids are riding, it's so nice. They didn't have school today. Now that we have the sweet wormwood planted and we have the wave petunias planted right on the front here so that way they can bush and trail over. Now what I'm going to actually do is in between these plantings, in between each planting here along the edge where they can still get sun, I'm going to seed a few little radishes. That way when the radishes are done, because they are so fast growing, you guys, you can pop radishes in anywhere as long as they get sun and it's a little bit cooler. Um, they're, they're, I could have seeded these a while ago already, but I didn't. So um, once they're done, then you can pull them out and the sweet wormwood will keep growing and just really fill in and you won't even notice that anything was removed or harvested from those areas. So as you can see, I just added a small little trenching you can also do holes whatever works for you but I'm only gonna put a few in here so that way they don't get you know too clustered so we're only gonna do a few little seeds in there and then I'm just gonna go ahead and cover and there we go and then we're gonna move on to the next little section that way you're really utilizing all the space that you have to grow food flowers and medicine and it's great to intermix them because then you're bringing all the beneficials all over and the pollinators right where you need them. Over in this bed, like I showed you, there's whorehound returning. So that does get a medium height up to about 16, 20 inches. Um, and with that popping up, I wanted something that was about that same height, but possibly just a little bit taller. Um, so over here in a line right behind it, I... Uh, planted some heliochrysum which are straw flowers and this is the saltane variety and then in front of that I am actually going to be planting some of my onions so then that way you get um, a couple different higher heights but then you have the onions so they're getting nice full sun because they're getting sun from the south side right behind me and right to the side of me over here. When you're planting and you're intermixing those flowers, herbs, and vegetables, always make sure that you are aware of the heights and the amount of space and room that it needs to grow. Um, and then you go and mix them because you don't want to place onions in between heliochrism and whorehound. I mean, that's a basic uh, kind of a, a example there. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's an example. So it's just kind of like, you know, you want to make sure that you uh, bring the shorter varieties towards the front and always keep in mind where the sun is in your garden because you don't want it to fall on a side that is you know possibly facing north so then all of the sun from the east south and west um, end up coming around but then you have taller varieties in front of it and the short varieties facing the north it's it's not going to get that sun that it needs to grow one thing that we always love to grow and eat is spinach but the one thing that I don't like about it is that when we cut, it doesn't return. So we like to put it in areas where once we cut it, it's not going to just be like this dead space because it does like to have cooler growing conditions, even though there are some varieties out there that can handle the heat. But I'm going to share with you where we're going to place that spinach so that way when it's harvested, it will not leave a gap. 
This is where we tend to like to grow our spinach is right in between our onions. So you can tell that we have the spacing perfect for the onions and growing something around them is not gonna harm them because they are gathering the sun from their tall stems. Whereas with the spinach, it'll stay lower as these keep growing taller so they will not shade each other out. They are actually a great companion that we found growing in our garden. So I'm just gonna kind of take my finger and just kind of weave around the onions like this all right and then that's where I'm gonna start placing my seeds this variety is called renegade hybrid put a little extra in there I do seed it a little bit heavier so that way we get a larger harvest right off the bat and then I make sure that they're kind of pressed in a little bit all right and then I'm just gonna go ahead and cover and a quick little tip I don't normally cover the seed until I have all the seed laid out in between all of the onions or anywhere really in that location so you know where you already seeded that variety Whereas now that I covered it, I don't wanna forget, so I'm gonna to have to go through and just finish, but keep everything exposed. Once everything is seeded, then I'll go through and press it into the soil just a tiny bit, you know, make it nice and sturdy and firm, and then give it a little covering.